Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. And it's Jeremy from Tested. Welcome to Projections, our show about VR, AR, and according to some companies, I guess you can call it <laughs> MR. Mixed reality. Mixed reality. That is, of course, what Microsoft is calling their AR and VR initiatives. Of course, Microsoft had the HoloLens, mm -hmm. uh, which they launched uh, in 2015, mm -hmm. um, but no new HoloLens hardware. What we're seeing this year is VR hardware. It's on the other side of this mixed reality uh, continuum, I guess. They're calling right. it. Yeah, it is VR hardware, and that's there is some confusion there. I think yeah. people are who have been following the space are going to see these headsets and see that they're called mixed reality and expect some kind of pass through. Right, but there's right. no pass through. It's strictly VR. I mean, it's still the early days where, uh, for me, mixed reality indicates some type of way to to mix real world footage, whether it's from a third person track camera, yeah. uh, w uh, with green screens, uh, with the person using some type of headset being tracked, like, or, or at least some kind of pass through sensor or camera on the headset itself right. so that you can incorporate the real world into your virtual reality. Right, which uh, Gear VR has a pass through just to look through the outside world. As does the, the Vive. Mm -hmm. uh, but Vive is the only one that actually combines yeah. the assets where they, they have the video pass through and then they overlay, use that, they, they process that and mix that with computer generated mm -hmm. elements. Uh, for, but from what we've seen so far, that is not in the Microsoft Windows Mixed Reality right. launch. So what they Wanted. I think this term is just an envelop, to envelop the entire space. Right. So it's HoloLens, it's virtual reality, it's that whole space. Because and and to their credit, they do make the point that one can be the other. Like if, if, sure. if HoloLens were to go completely opaque, you've got virtual reality. I think all of us know AR with a black screen basically becomes VR. The yeah. the the, com the uh, elements, the technical requirements for tracking, for comfort, they're all essentially the same. You want at least 90 frames per second of performance. You want your head positionally tracked, six degrees of tracking in the real world, mm -hmm. and you want some parts of the real world, maybe whether it's touch controllers, a gamepad, input devices, that tracked as well. And for Windows, for Microsoft's hardware, what they're launching on October 17th, we're gonna get a bunch of that, uh, but done differently. Yes, so they have a number of headsets coming out. In fact, five headsets. They just announced their fifth today. Mm -hmm. um, and so they have five of these mixed reality headsets coming out, day and date with the creator's update. Mm -hmm. And they are, they are all, the first four that were announced are all very similarly spec. Yeah, and we've been talking to some of the manufacturers, Lenovo, uh, Dell, and HP, and they've been very frank about uh, the spec being provided to them. Right. They're not doing R&D on their own in terms of uh, the tracking or in terms of displays. Microsoft mm -hmm. came to them and said, for our launch, if you want to be part of it, you can design the device ID the way it looks mm -hmm. any way you want, but you're going to be using these 1440 by 1440 displays, two of them. Per eye. Per eye, 1440 by 1440, as well as inside out tracking on a tethered experience. That's kind of the, the magic sauce. That's what really differentiates their headsets. I mean, I would, the, the resolution is nice. It is noticeably higher. Um, as you said, we've used uh, three of the of those initial uh, four headsets, and the resolution is noticeably higher. Right, so the Rift is that 2160 by, I believe, 1200, mm -hmm. uh, split in two. Right. Here, 1440 by 1440, a little bit more vertical resolution and a little bit more that horizontal resolution uh, with a similar, very similar field of view, uh, which means right. if you pay attention to it, you will see a binocular effect. They, they quote a 105 degree field field of view. Yeah, but it's you know it's readable. You can read text inside. Well, as you can with the Rift or yep. the Vive, yep. but yep. there is like every little bit now really does matter. I mean, mm -hmm. resolution is one of those pain points for VR. Yeah, um, you know you have to design around it, and eventually we're trying to get to the point where it is high definition a window into virtual reality. So but tracking. The thing that, that really sets these apart is this inside out tracking. And they call it HoloLens technology. We don't know to what extent it actually is like the same technology, uh, but it is really good. I would say that they have nailed it. From what we've used in the HoloLens, mm -hmm. their tracking system, their SLAM system, that yeah. simultaneous location and mapping, has been among the best in AR devices. Its ability in real time to, to track the environment, recognize elements of the environment mm -hmm. in all sorts of lighting conditions and place you positionally, but you get a lot of um, you get a lot of leeway with HoloLens because there's pass-through of light. So even if oh, the SLAM of, system is in, imperfect, right. so there's there's no, it's uncomfortable. So there's no nausea with augmented yeah. reality systems just because you inherently have the real world you know, in your field of view. So our question was in using that similar system, however maybe it's a subset of technology, yeah. uh, in using in a tethered system to these Windows Mixed 
reality headsets, would we get the same amount of fidelity and comfort? Well, all that we've seen so far is that they can track position. And so that, which is to say, I have not seen them actually uh, scan the space and present 3D geometry to me of, of my room, for mm -hmm. instance. Like, it, I have not seen Windows Mixed Reality look at a room and recognize that there's a table there that is elevated, that is 3D space that I can potentially play a game on top of or something like that, that with, you can with right. HoloLens. Which you need for AR, but right. you may not need for, for VR. But what, it's, what it does do very clearly and very well is it tracks 3D space. So positional space inside out from your headset. There's two things about having the inside out tracking that I like a lot. One is the setup process. You don't have to set up sensors or, or lighthouses or mm -hmm. any kind of device that you have to run cables to or plug in. Uh, but there's also the occlusion problem. So right. this eliminates that more or less. I mean, you your uh, cameras are now mounted to your headset. So presumably, there's not going to be anything in between you and the controllers, which is really the only other track device. Uh, other than that, it seems to be able to track the environment perfectly well. I mean, you can actually take the headset and just experiment with it, putting it down to the floor, and get right down to the floor, and it continues to track the position. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. There's stereo cameras in all these headsets. So uh, I, the thing I was hoping to track was how close could you get these headsets to whether the controllers or table mm. before you lose tracking, and pretty pretty darn close. Yeah, that's impressive. And Microsoft isn't shy about doing these demos in really dark rooms or really bright rooms. It seems like in all lighting conditions, this is gonna work as well. It is tethered, so I don't know how much of that data is being processed locally versus on your computer, Good how question. much of actual compute is being taxed in addition to that. Um, um, and then the controller. So that's the other big difference. It is a trade-off, right? Ease of setup, mm -hmm. um, but there is a field of view for the tracking. That's right. In not, front of you. Not just for your eyes, but for the actual tracking. Yeah. And, and for positional tracking, it's it, you'd never know where that field of view is. It wouldn't matter as long as it works, it works. But it also tracks your controllers, as we said. So uh, my fear before I tried one of these headsets was that when I moved my controllers outside of my own field of view and it stopped being tracked, that I would just, you know, it'd be awkward. Maybe if I'm in social VR and I'm holding my hand out and I look away, that hand is now stuck in space and I can't move it even though I might physically be moving my arm, right? Or I'm playing a game like Space Pirate Trainer or something like that where I have a shield and I'm actually defending myself where I'm not looking from a ship that's firing on me or something like that. Well, we've tried this. It does stop tracking, but it holds its position, which seems like in terms of like Space Pirate Trainer at the very least, provides enough of a solution. And does rotation, at least. That's right, so uh, obviously like the gyro is still active. Yeah. That's right. Um, so I don't know, it remains to be seen like in social if it actually is jarring to see arms that are snap into position now and then based on mm -hmm. where the, the user is looking. My hunch though is that they've crossed a threshold into acceptability. Right, and they've, they've probably done the math, right? They know, they've, they know where, gaze is, where your gaze is. Right. They know that in, in most applications your points of interest, the things you're gonna be interacting with, are gonna be in front of you. Mm -hmm. um, and I am glad that the field of view of the tracking is at least extended beyond the visual field That's of view. That's a really good point. You never see the tracking lost. Yeah. Unless, as you cleverly did, you watch the shadow of the object, yeah. and then you can actually watch when the tracking stops. Yes, and it's fast enough that when you, if you snap your head back to your hand, that's locked in place, mm -hmm. it will automatically stop and you never see the snapping. That's right. It just looks like it's always been there and mm -hmm. has been following all along, uh, even when it hasn't been. Um, but field of view is also something that's different in one final headset. One thing I did announce today mm -hmm. at this mixed reality uh, launch event is that they have one new partner. It's gonna be Samsung, which has a headset called the HMD Odyssey. And this is gonna be a premium headset. Yeah, they're calling it premium. and. So it costs fifty dollars more than the most expensive of the of the original four. Uh, so it costs four hundred ninety nine dollars. And what but what it gets you is integrated headphones, an integrated microphone, and a slightly higher resolution display. So now you have fourteen forty uh, horizontal for each eye, but then you have sixteen hundred vertical. Yeah, and also this, these are OLED panels as opposed to LCDs. Yeah. And having used them back and forth, the, the, uh, one of the o other four and the Samsung, mm. the Samsung one is noticeably better. Oh yeah, I, much, I, I much agree better. with you. Did we mention that it has a slightly higher field of view? Yes, it's 110 degrees as opposed to 105. Right, and it has an IPD adjustment. Some of the other headsets at least didn't have that. Right. And so I was able to adjust it. I got a nice circular view. Um, I, was, I was impressed. We've tried now four of these headsets, including the Samsung. The Samsung is clearly, especially for only 50 or even $100 difference, it's clearly the one that you want to buy. Absolutely, and it's probably the best mainstream VR 
uh, quality for a headset because mm -hmm. you can use Steam VR on this. It's going to be better than the visual fidelity, better than what you're going to get off the shelf on a Rift or a right. Vive. They, they had announced previously that Steam VR would be coming in Windows Mixed Reality, and what they announced today was that developers can now access the API or the SDK in order to get it working. Mm -hmm. uh, but it won't be coming to consumers at launch. It will be coming right. to consumers sometime before the end of the year by holiday. So what can you do with the Windows Mixed Reality headset if you buy it on October 17th? Well. You can access the special version of Windows 10. I think this was on the software side part of their big Microsoft's big grand plan for VR, AR, and MR, mm -hmm. which is an, another layer of interface on top of Windows 10 uh, that they call uh, the Cliff House. Right. They call it the, the official name is the Windows Mixed Reality Home, but I think everyone's going to call it the Cliff House. They do internally it too, um, and it's basically it's not unlike Steam. Uh, this new Steam VR interface, which is mm -hmm. a basically like a house mm -hmm. where you can access your your apps and launch things from, or but, on the Oculus Home, which is like a house, but you can't <laughs> teleport you can't, you around. You can't move around in, in yep. the Oculus Home. You can move around in this. You teleport, um, and the only problem is that it's not very customizable. You can't change the architecture, the geometry. You can't really make it your own yet. I really want to see all of these home spaces from, from Vive, Oculus, and Microsoft. Just whoever's doing these spaces, I want to see them be expand those ideas to something that I can create, make my own, and then invite my friends over and share yeah. that experience with them. Nobody is doing that well, yet. Well, Steam VR has that. Has, uh, I mean, they're launchers, technically. And right. Steam VR Home lets you invite people in. And That's while true. you can't move geometry in VR, people can design holodecks and other locations that you can right. download. But we're talking about a company here that had uh, that they own Minecraft. They it's could true. have taken 100%. Minecraft. 100%. They sent you into the game design your home space, your mm -hmm. VR home, and then yeah. you bring that, and then you can invite your friends over, launch your apps from there. I mean, that would be amazing. That's the kind of flexibility that I'm looking for uh, from, you know, from virtual reality home spaces. And they did say that in the future, they are going to be developing more of these different aesthetic environments, different architects. They didn't say you'd be able to build your own, right. but they would be releasing more. And of course, they are going to be looking for ways for you to uh, have social experiences in them. Yeah, but, they did allude to that. Yeah, I do. I do want to say that I do like the fact that it is basically virtual desktop combined with an app launcher. They're they're app launchers. I yeah. mean, it's virtual desktop. If you have, uh, and the virtual desktop is is floating in front of you, mm -hmm. and it's only if you're in the quote unquote ultra experience, if you have the base spin, min spec to run it. Uh, but they're app launchers with icons posted on walls that you can move around. Um, I don't know if that's compelling. Well, I, I like the fact that I can see my desktop in there. I mean, Steam knew that from the start. You could always see your desktop inside of Steam VR. Um, and Oculus, you still can't do that through their app. You have to launch a virtual desktop app or something that allows you to watch to see your desktop. Um, I think it's important. I mean, especially it coming from Microsoft, it makes a lot of sense for Windows to be accessible from there. Yeah. But what they've done is they've made it so that they've added a, a layer of interface so that every app is basically usable in VR. Uh, it depends. It's going to remain to be seen, like to what degree. Every two D app, right? All twenty thousand in the the Windows Store, <laughs> right, <laughs> right. the Microsoft Store, right? And but they've also asked a lot of um, developers to port their games directly to the Windows Mixed Reality platform. So you've got Space Pirate Trainer and lots of other favorites um, that are coming directly to them. So you, if you've bought them before, uh, you can buy them again if you want to on Windows Mixed Reality. But you can also, obviously, by the end of the year, as we said, just play your Steam games straight through it. They're the only big player in VR right now pushing for productivity in the headsets. Mm. Like when you think of what SteamVR is doing, uh, their launcher, as beautiful as it is, it's still a launcher. Yeah, you can customize their physics in there, but it's not something that Valve says, use your web browser in here, right. do word processing in here, listen to music, watch a movie in here. No, launch an app and do that. Oculus, same thing. It, while it may look like a house and have a pretty carpet and, and mm -hmm. you can see the scene, it's still an app launcher. Microsoft really feels like, whether it's because they're min-spec, they're, they feel confident in the min-spec with the, the screen resolution um, of those headsets, or the interface, they feel like, you should be able to manage your mail and your calendar. That's mm -hmm. what things they explicitly demoed uh, in PowerPoint presentations, explicitly demoed in this in this launcher. Um, but I, I was intrigued by the voice control, yeah. not not by the, any of the uses that they actually the examples that they used. But it was interesting to me that in this uh, virtual reality home space, you can um, use your voice to say move this, and then it, whatever you're looking at 
becomes movable, and then you say to there, and it will drop it there. That connection between voice and gaze awareness is something new. The context, yeah. Right, exactly. That context awareness is something new, and I feel like like Bill Gates has always been intrigued by voice control, and it's never been that great. But now with this new feedback loop, this, you know, of knowing what I'm looking at, mm -hmm. that raises interesting questions, and I'll be curious to see where that heads to. Right, even though it's not eye tracking, it's yeah. where you're pointing at. It might as well be. Yeah. yeah, and it's still kind of a little slow, at least what we've yep. seen. The other interesting thing is if they're positioning this you know, this shell as a spatial interface, a, a next generation version of, of Windows, the fact that it is constrained only to the new headsets, right. and that Oculus users and Vive users can't access this cliff house, that befuddles me. That was, that was actually quite a surprise to me. I, I assumed otherwise, and I said, so what features are exclusive to Windows Mixed Reality headset buyers, mm -hmm. and it turns out all of them. <laughs> so um, I, I can't imagine why they won't let Rift and Oculus and whatever VR headset owners you have use that space. I mean, that they don't have a position yet. They, and there is one that exists. And, and granted, in historical terms, we're still in a very nascent stage of VR adoption. Nonetheless, there's a million plus users out there that have headsets that'd be happy to use this interface. And especially if there's a store in there that they can't even access unless they buy the headset, as you said, befuddling. And I, I hope that they come around on that and they yeah. allow other um, headsets to use it. I mean, from what they've showed, there's potential. Clearly, they've been working on this layer, this VR layer, for a long time. Uh, but it's it's... It's not definitely not there yet. I mean, yeah. the fact that you still have to use a, a virtual keyboard um, mm. to type if you're going to be composing emails in mm -hmm. VR, uh, even though they hinted at in the future being able to track things like a keyboard, they haven't solved all the problems of no. VR. Uh, it's dipping their toes in it. I wonder if the Windows Mixed Reality headset isn't more conducive to uh, being able to see objects like, like your keyboard in VR space because uh, they don't necessarily have to be active anymore. You know, with, with like Rift or Vive, we always assumed you'd put sensors on your keyboard and mouse in order to make them appear in VR. Yeah. But with inside out tracking, there's no reason that it couldn't be a big fat QR code or some other, uh, you know, recognizable right. shape or something, even even this kind of ink for all I know. Yeah. Um, and then if it locked on at once, it could like, keep the orientation of the room and generally keep its you know position in, in RAM and well there's your keyboard that that strikes me as something that is potentially a lot cheaper to develop for obviously this is just me thinking outside the box but I, I wonder if that if their solution isn't more you know maybe they're gonna see a lot more um, devices that actually support that where you can track things in VR for in that way it's it all depends on how they implement that inside-out computer vision exactly, system. If exactly. It's, is it IR is it video yeah these are questions that we just don't have yeah the, but Alex, to. the presenter did you know suggest that once we have that technology he's indicated it's very near future those keys don't have to be keyboard keys anymore sure they could be whatever you want you yeah. could you know augment controls for your game or your app on them this is intriguing ideas. Yeah, and, and they're not going so far as to redesign the way you hold controllers right. or any of that stuff. I think they're really trying to make use of the things that existing PC users, Windows users, and existing VR users are already going to be comfortable with. What did you think of their controllers, the, the ergonomics of them? You know, they feel, I don't think they were as comfortable as the Oculus Touch controllers. Mm -hmm. They didn't feel as natural, but they do have button parity. You know, there is a grip button. It's not an analog grip button, but it right. is. there is an analog trigger. Mm -hmm. um, it felt more wand-like than something perfectly ergonomic. I agree. Uh, but there is, uh, in addition to a thumbstick, there's a trackpad and a thumbstick. Mm -hmm. And they're all the same, essentially. I mean, right. there are maybe two design differences right. between the Samsung one and some of the other ones. You, you can see the LEDs on them, which is an interesting choice. Uh, yep. You know, These are obviously covered in IR LEDs that are blinking the whole time, but we mm -hmm. just can't see them. Yep. With their controllers, uh, they're brightly lit all over all the time. I think that we have a lot more questions about about Microsoft's Windows Mixed Reality initiative, but it's gonna be coming out soon. Uh, the Samsung headset, which is the one that I'm most interested in, yep. will be launching in early November. And I think a question for a lot of VR enthusiasts out there is we are now more than one year into the launch of consumer VR. Some people may have <laughs> a Rift, some people may have a Vive. There are definitely a lot of things you can do in the Oculus Store and in Steam VR. Mm -hmm. Now, if there was a way to use like Revive for Windows Mixed Reality, mm -hmm. should someone buy like the Samsung headset over a Vive or over the Rift? 
That's yeah. the question I, 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 after testing it, I'm gonna to wanna to answer. Yeah, I, I agree with you about about the resolution being compelling. I mean, there there is something there, especially if you're using it for you know entertainment purposes, not just video games, but for maybe for mm -hmm. just watching things in big screen or using virtual mm -hmm. desktop. Uh, that extra resolution bump, it's noticeable. And it was it, it really does, nice. It does matter. I don't know if the controllers, though, feel quite as good. Yeah. You know, it would be nice if, if you could somehow manage the best of both worlds somehow. <laughs> uh, then you would need the camera setups yeah, and the uh, tracking setups. Yeah, well, I mean, some people out there are crazy enough to do it. Yeah. Uh, uh, what do, you know, we should mention Allspace VR. That's right, uh, they, yes. They were saved by the bell. Wow, Microsoft also announced they had acquired Altspace VR, uh, which is great for people who love Altspace. They're gonna keep it as is for mm -hmm. now. But to me, it speaks to the fact that they had not developed something internally to compete in that space. While they had virtual desktop, they had running of apps and an app launcher, they had not, at least not something ready to launch with this launch, the important, something as important as social VR. Mm -hmm. So Altspace is their solution for now. Uh, I suppose, well, Minecraft could qualify for a social VR experience, but it, it really isn't strictly social. It's not something where you gather or you have events or that kind of thing. Yeah, I'm just glad that they did it. Uh, it's, it's, it's great for that community. Um, there was, at the event, there were questions about the community. There's a lot of concern that they maintain it. And Microsoft said, you know, we promise we want to support that community in every way. And that they said nothing's gonna change as of day one. So All right. good on them. Countdown to October 17th when Windows Mixed Reality gets launched officially. We'll be reviewing the headsets, getting those in, and have more impressions in a future episode of Projections. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.